In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a basic reaction time test with Scratch. The program starts when you click the green flag and the circle changes to white. You're supposed to watch and click the circle as soon as it changes to black. The program will then display your reaction time in seconds. In the first part of the video, I'll show you how to build the program starting with a blank file. But if you've already made a copy of the existing Science Buddies program and you just want to know how it works and what you can change or add, you can skip ahead to the second part of the video. To get started, create an account at scratch.mit.edu if you don't have one already, then log in and click the Create button at the top of the screen. This will open a new program where you have the stage or the area that will show your animation and the area where you can click and drag blocks from the menu to write your program. The characters that appear on stage are called sprites. By default, when you start a new program, there is a cat called Sprite 1, and you could use this sprite for the program, but I'm going to show you how to delete it and create a new one. So click the trash can icon next to the sprite, and then go down here, hover over the choose a sprite button, and move your mouse up to the paint button Click that, and it will allow you to design your own new sprite. Here you have a bunch of tools that you can use to draw your own sprites. So you can draw whatever you want, but I'm going to keep this example very simple and just draw a circle. To do that, I'm going to click on the circle button and then click and drag to draw the circle. There are controls that allow you to change the fill color, line color, and line thickness of the circle by clicking on these menus here. But again, I'm going to keep this simple and just have a white circle with a black outline. So we have created a single circle sprite. Next, we need to create a new costume for our sprite. Costumes let you keep the same underlying sprite, but change its appearance. We're going to do that by going up to costume one in the top left corner here, left clicking on it and selecting duplicate, which will create an identical copy named costume two but we want to change the appearance of this sprite so it looks different. That is going to be our on-screen visual cue for our reaction time test. So to do that, I'm going to select the arrow tool here. I'm going to click on the circle, and then I am going to select a different fill color. Again, I'm just gonna go between black and white, but you could select other colors here. So now we have a single sprite with two possible costumes or appearances, a white circle, and a black circle. Now we are going to switch back over to our code tab. Make sure we have the sprite selected and not the backdrop because you can write different programs for different sprites and the background or backdrop of your stage. So we're gonna make sure we have the sprite selected and we are going to write our program here. Now, if you remember what I showed at the beginning of the video, the general idea is that we want to measure the amount of time it takes the user to click on the circle after it changes color. So we are going to build our program to make that happen. The first thing we need to do is tell the program how to start, and we are going to do that by telling it to start when the user clicks on the green flag. So we are going to go over here to the events menu, find this when green flag clicked block, and drag that out here into our program area. The next thing we're going to do is display a message to the users so they know what to do. So we're going to do that with the looks menu here, and we can display a message that says, say whatever you want. So the default is just say hello, but I'm going to type in, click on the circle as soon as it changes color. So that is giving the user instructions for what to do once the program has started. So we should see that if I click on the green flag now, this sprite is going to have a little word bubble that pops up and says the message I typed in here. The other thing we want to do as soon as the program starts is set the proper costume. So we want the circle to start out white and then it's going to change to black later in the program. So we can do that with the switch costume to block and I am going to have it switch to costume one. So we're gonna make sure, remember, if we go over to our costumes, costume one is the white one, which you can toggle manually by selecting here in the costumes tab, but we want our program to do that automatically when it runs. So I am going to have switch costume to costume one. And you could rearrange the order of these two blocks if you want. It's not a huge deal, so I could click 
and rearrange these so it switches to the costume first and then says this next. The speed with which that happens on screen is probably gonna be fast enough that you're not gonna notice which one comes first, so it doesn't matter too much. I'm going to zoom in a bit here so it's a little easier to see the code with larger font. I apologize for not doing that earlier. The next thing we are going to do is wait for a little bit. So we don't wanna change the color of the circle right away. We wanna give the user some time to get ready to click and move their mouse from the green flag over here to the circle. We are going to do that with the wait block, which you can find under control. So if we go under the control menu, there is a block that says wait for one seconds, and you can click this text box here and change that to a different number. So I'm going to type in five and tell it to wait for five seconds. So if I run the program now, we're not going to see anything different happen because it's just waiting for an additional five seconds after setting the costume and saying this message and then not doing anything else. What we want to do immediately after we are done waiting is change the appearance of the circle from white to black, which means we need to switch the costume. So we are going to go back to the looks menu, select the switch costume block again, and drag out switch to costume two. So we should see that now when I click the flag, after five seconds, the circle is going to change from the white to the black costume. The next thing we want to do is start measuring time, and we can do that with Scratch's built-in timer that you can access under the Sensing menu. Now, this timer automatically starts counting up from zero as soon as the program starts when you click the green flag, but we don't want to start measuring time until the circle changes color. So we need to use the Reset Timer block and drag that out here under the switch costume block so the timer will restart at zero as soon as the costume changes color. And now we can measure how long it takes until the user clicks on the circle. To do that, we need another event block. So go back to the events menu and we'll see that there is a block for when this sprite clicked. So the code under this block is going to execute when you click on that sprite and we want to tell the user what their reaction time was, so we want to display or say the value of the timer, which is a number in seconds. So to do that, we are going to go back up to the looks menu, use another say block, and we don't wanna say a pre-written message here, we want to say the timer value, so we access that by going over to the sensing menu and dragging out this block for timer and it will pop into the say block there. So it will say the value of the timer, which remember we have reset or started at zero as soon as the circle changed colors. So what we should see now is if I click the green flag, the circle starts out white. After five seconds, it's going to change to black. And then as soon as I click on it, this message changes to the value of the timer. So 1.83 seconds is how long it took me to click on the circle after it changed from white to black. We now have a basic working reaction time test, but there are a few things we can do to improve it. The first is using a random number for this wait time instead of a fixed number. So if you always wait for the same amount of time and you have somebody doing multiple trials or taking the test over and over again, they might try to count in their head and sort of preemptively click when they know it's going to change color instead of actually waiting for the visual stimulus. So if you have a random number here so they don't know exactly how long it's going to take, that prevents them from doing that. You can do that by going over here to the operators block and dragging out pick random and snapping that into the wait block here. So it defaults to one to 10, but again, you can click on each of those text boxes and change it to a different value. You wanna give people a little bit of time to get their mouse from the green flag over to the circle. So I bumped this up to two or three seconds, but you can pick whatever two numbers you want here. Now we see that when we run this, it is going to wait for a random amount of time, so I don't know exactly how long it's going to take. So I have to kind of sit here in suspense. There we go. And 0.37 seconds was how long it took me to click after the circle changed colors. So that keeps you on your toes and actually watching for the visual stimulus instead of just trying to count and guess when you should click because you know it's a fixed amount. Next, you might want to customize this message that gets printed out a little more. It's just printing a number right now, and you know that's in seconds because you're the one who wrote the program, but it might not be obvious to the user exactly what that number's me number means. 
So you can do that using the join block that allows you to join two words or variables. So I have to rearrange things a bit here. I'm going to drag the timer block into the first one of those. And then in the second one, I'm going to click and type space seconds. So now when I put that in there, it should say seconds after the time. So again, I have to wait for it to change. And now it says 1.305 seconds instead of just 1.305. So that just makes the interface a little nicer for the user so that message isn't ambiguous. The next thing we're going to do is a little more advanced. Right now, there is nothing preventing the user from clicking the circle too early. So if I start the program and click the circle before it changes color, it's still going to display a time here because remember the timer starts at zero as soon as I click the green flag and then it resets after this wait block. But if I click before that, while the program is still waiting, it's just gonna display that initial time and it's not gonna actually measure my reaction time. And that isn't the end of the world, but ideally we would like to prevent, prevent the user from doing that and maybe display a message that says, hey, you clicked too early, click the green flag to start again. So that's what we're going to do next. We can do that using an if else statement. So an if else statement is a block of code that says if one thing is true, then we're gonna do something else. If that one thing is not true, then we're gonna do something else. So it's a condition that determines which code happens. So we are going to use an if else statement under our when this sprite clicked block to check if the costume has changed yet. So if the circle is still white, if we are still in costume one, then we want to display that message that says, hey, you click too early, start over. But if the circle has changed to black and we are in costume two, then we want to say the timer value. So to do that, we are first going to go over here to the operators menu, and we are going to find the equals block. So this lets you compare if two things are equal. And we're going to slot that into this hexagon shape in the if statement. And remember, we want to check which costume the sprite is currently set to. Is it one or two? So we do that by going back up to the looks menu. We've got to scroll down a bit and we see that there's this block here for costume number. So we can drag that out and slot it into one side of that equals condition. And then we want to change this number. There is no costume number 50. We only have costume numbers one and two. So I'm going to change that to a one. And remember that if we are still in costume one, we don't want to say the timer value. We want to display a different message. So if we're still in costume one, then we're going to say something like too early, click the green flag to start over. So that will only display if the user clicks the circle while it is still white and it's still in costume one. Else, if the costume number is not one, that means it has to be two because we only have two costume numbers, then we are going to say the timer value like we did before. So let's see how that works. If I start the program and click too early, I get this message that I click too early and I should click the green flag to start over. But if I click and wait for the circle to change color, then click, it will display the timer value like it did before. So to summarize, and again, this is a little more complicated if you are new to programming and you haven't seen if else statements before, the if statement is determining which section of code happens based on a condition. So depending on what costume the sprite has, when I click on it, it will either say too early if the costume number is still one, or it will say the timer value if the costume number is two. Here's a quick summary for people who skipped ahead to the full program. Again, this is a reaction time program that starts when you click the green flag. It then measures the amount of time it takes you to click on the circle after it changes from white to black. Even if you have never programmed in Scratch before, there are a bunch of things you can change in this code. If you really want to understand what this code does block by block, you need to go back and watch the first half of this video. But for example, if you want to change the messages that are displayed on screen, you can just click and change what is typed in these say blocks. So if you wanna change the instructions to the user or the message that displays when they accidentally click on the circle too early 
or what displays when it shows their reaction time, you can change any of the text boxes here. Right now, the program waits for a random amount of time between 3 and 10 seconds before the circle switches from white to black, but you can change the upper or lower limits of that range by clicking on one of these boxes and entering a different number. For example, if I make that change, now it will wait between 5 and 10 seconds. If you want to change the appearance of the circle and use different colors, you can do that by clicking up here on the Costumes tab. The circle has two different costumes, one with a white fill and one with a black fill, but in either one of those, you can click on the circle using the arrow tool and then change its fill color, line color, and line thickness using the menu up here. You can also use different drawing tools to draw or change the shape, but I'm not going to go over all of those options in this video. There are many other things you could add or customize with the program. I'm going to give just one more example. Let's say that you wanted to play a sound or have an auditory cue in addition to a visual cue or color change for measuring reaction time. You can do that with the sound menu here by dragging out the block for start sound. You can put that immediately after the costume change block here and that will play a sound in addition to changing the appearance when you run the program. For written instructions to use this program for a science project, check out the links in the video description. For over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out the rest of our YouTube channel and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.